Welcome to the bathroom lift mount cell monitor installation video. Here we're going to be explaining what the lift mount cell monitor is and how it goes connected to the Nissan Leaf cells. Also going to be talking about the wiring, make sure they all talk properly to your watch mount supervisor. Often people buy the whole Nissan Leaf battery pack that comes with 48 cells. We'll be splitting the cells and connecting them in series in parallel like we demonstrated here in the video. And this is a very cool example. This is a, one of our customers. He actually purchased two complete Nissan Leaf packs, split the cells, reconfigured them in 48 volts. If you count, there are actually 14 cells in parallel from the top to the bottom and seven double modules connected in series. So you get 14 series, 48 volts, 14 parallels. This is actually a very powerful cell monitor. So you can have one cell monitor here and lots of cells connected in parallel. The Nissan Leaf cells, they have three connections. They actually double cells. So inside every can, you have two series connections there. So you have one cell here and another cell connection here. So you see here the middle is just for sensing. You can actually get away with a small wire because the current is actually flowing between negative and positive. So do not run current through this. It's more for voltage sensing. And you also notice that they come in two different orientations. Some cells have the positive on the left. Some cells have the positive on the right. This is just to make it easier to configure things in series for the high voltage pack in the car. When you run multiple cells in parallel, you really need to pay attention. Otherwise, when you put the bus bar, you might have one cell back to front and might short the whole thing together. Here is a quick close up on your cell monitor. It is actually divided in two sections. To your left, you have the resistor bank here and you have one temperature sensor. That's the area that gets hot up to 75 degrees. You have all your cell monitoring area. That's where the communication happens. That's where it measures the voltage. It stores the cell configuration. There's another temperature sensor here. It senses the cell temperature. And you have two LEDs. As soon as you connect the four pin connector here and powering up the cell monitor, solid green stays on for a few hours. And then when you connect the communication here, it's blinking. So that now it's talking to the watch mode supervisor. That's how you see the communication is happening. It's working based on the green LED pulsing. The red LED here, it means two things as well. If you solid red on like this, it's actually in bypass mode. So it should be 75 degrees Celsius. Do not touch if you see red LED on. If it's quickly blinking, so it means that there's something wrong, too high or too low voltage or too high or too low temperature. There's something out of the parameters you set here. So red means warning. Now we're going to be configuring into a 14S battery. Before we start mounting all the cell monitors to the cells, we actually have to connect all the batteries in series using the bus bars here. So here you see we have seven Nissan Leaf modules connected in series. Each cell is double. So here we're going to be showing this is one cell, 3.9. This is the second cell, 7 point something. Connecting all in series, we have about 50 something volts. Yeah, 55 volts. So they go like this, all in series. So now we're going to start installing the cell monitors one by one here. Here is a very important note. So you have a flat PCB. We're going to be bolting this thing to the cell terminals. You will notice in this case here, we have a thick bus bar on this side and nothing on this side. So what caused the cell monitor to twist and crack and sometimes even breaking the cell monitor. Okay. So make sure you put washers, you put something, but positive and negative terminals, they're exactly on the same level. We put the same bus bar on the other side here. So they're both aligned. So here we have negative, positive, but on the second cell, the orientation is reversed. So that means that the cell monitor will be facing upside down now. And then we go back to normal, and the other one will go back upside down. That's how we're gonna go. It's 
time to connect all the little ring terminals to the voltage sensing connection in the middle here. Before we start plugging things and organizing the cables, it's actually very important to mention we're dealing with very small wires here, very small crimps. So don't just go and pull by the wires here. You might end up damaging one of the crimps. So what we will normally do, I use my nail. I don't have much nail, but I always try to grab the connector and the wire all together. It's actually very simple. You just go, yeah, see, really easy to plug and unplug. You do it again here. Look, it just works and you never damage the connector. And the same here for the two pin. I use my nail here to support and pull cable and connector all together. It's guaranteed it's not gonna damage your wiring. Normally I start wiring from the most negative cell in the battery. That's gonna be the cell number one. So and then make my way all the way up to the very last on top one, cell 14. Now we're gonna be powering up both cell monitors. As soon as I plug the four pin connector here, you're gonna see green and red LED lights on both cell monitors here, okay? So just pay attention. Yeah, plug it on. Yeah, red and green, yes. So now we're gonna be linking the communication from the first cell monitor to the following cell monitor in the network. So it goes from an output to the input of the next one. Cable management is very important. We're gonna be curling this thing up and targeting behind the PCB somewhere around here. Yeah, so now I'm just going to be targeting somewhere behind the PCB and keep everything nice and neat. Same for the red and black wire here. Just use something non-conductive for this. Now I'm going to be repeating the same procedure to all the other cell monitors. So you see here, the very last cable, we're gonna be leaving here on the side for now. Your battery on starter kit actually comes with one extra wire so you can complete the network here. So all you actually need is just the blue and the yellow wires. You don't need the black and red, so you can actually hold the connector here and pull these wires apart. And then you're gonna end up with something just like that. I'm gonna be connecting the two pin to the input on the first cell monitor here. Now you're gonna grab your CMU connection that's connected to your watch mode supervisor. You're gonna be connecting the four pin connector to the four pin connector here. You see, quickly blinking. As soon as I connect the last cell monitor with the two pin connector here, I'm actually gonna be completing the network. The green LED is gonna come up here on the watch mode supervisor. Yeah, you see that green LED blinking. That's a very good news. Now we actually have to tell the software and the watch mode supervisor that we're using leaf mode cell monitors. So we're gonna click here on top of menu, go down to tools, and then we're gonna click wizard setup. So here we have a battery type, which is in this case, we have to select lithium ion long life. And then next one is actually, you pick the type of cell monitors you're using. In this case, it's leaf mode eight watts. And here's the number of total devices connected to your watch mode supervisor. So here we actually have 14 cell monitors, seven here and another seven there. So we're actually going to be putting 14. 14. Nominal capacity actually vary depending on what lease and leaf cells you're actually using. There's generation one, generation two, generation three. So in this case, we're just gonna go with 60 amp hour and then we're gonna press enter and then we're gonna go here and press save. So now you see all cell monitors are blinking. Yes, everything has been successful configured. So now let's just click here on menu, go to hardware. We're gonna select Cellmon tab, and now we're gonna be doing a device sync so you can sync all cell monitors to your network for the first time. Here you see there's a start button, we're gonna click here, and now it's actually gonna be try to find 14 cell monitors here in your network. 
So he's sending the message to 14. Yes, he did find 14. That's very good news. Yes, success. So now we can actually close this and go to your menu tab and chart. So now you can see 14 cell monitors perfectly working here. You see you have a green LED there. You see all LEDs flicking. Communications flowing through all cell monitors here. So now let's reconfigure the pack. Everything was connected in series previously. Now we're gonna have some series in parallels. just explaining what's happening here so now we have three cells connected in parallel here like one big cell and then they're linked in series now so you actually have one internal series second internal series linked third internal series fourth internal series so you have four series three parallels here so this is very visual so you can understand how the connection works you gotta start connecting the cell monitors here. You see the lights gonna blink. Yep. Yeah, you see both monitors are on. And then I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna turn it on. Yeah, both LEDs on. This is the most negative cell in a pack, and this is the positive cell in a pack. So we're actually gonna start from here, linking to the next cell monitor. So we're gonna get this cable, four pin links to the two pin cable here. Now we're going to be connecting to the watch mode supervisor. And we're going to set up the two pin. So data goes in. That's it. Now they're blinking. So you see they're already talking. They're detecting. Because they've been configured before. As soon as I plug here, you're going to see the green LED coming up there. Yes. So the network is complete and works. Now let's go to the software. So you see here it looks a bit weird because I picked up two random cell monitors from the pack that have been already configured for 14 yes. So let's fix this. So now we're going to click here on top of menu. Going to go down to tools. Going to go to wizard setup. This is no 14. We actually have one, two, three, four cell monitors here. So we're going to be changing this to four. Enter. And now let's say the cells are 60 amp hour. We now have three cells in parallel, so this times three, which is 180. So we change to 180. Press save and save the configuration. Wizard setup normally wipes out your previous settings and kind of refresh everything. So there's another option here. If you have things already working, set up. So you just go here on menu, you go through hardware, and then you click here on Salmon, and then you click on edit. I need to change the number of cells you have here. Then you go to shunt, click on edit, and change your nominal capacity here, just like we did in wizard setup. And press save. Every cell monitor configuration change you do in your system, you have to go here and do a device sync. So we go to cellmon and click here on device sync. So this is actually gonna be telling the cell monitors all the new parameters you set up. You see here, they actually found four. Yes, perfect, success. All cell monitors are actually blinking nicely. So now I click here on menu, chart. Perfect, so now you see all four cells here, really nice the way it should be. This concludes the LeafMore cell monitor installation video. If you would like more information, please check out bathroom.com. We also have many instructional troubleshooting videos here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.